As we learned in the last lecture, we can have multiple action methods in the same controller. Basically, all actions related to a particular resource can be placed in the same controller. For example, user registration and user sign in and user sign out, these are the tasks we can perform for user account. So we can create action method for these tasks in the same user account controller. In the same way, let's go ahead and let's add some more action methods in the home controller, which we created in the last lecture. But before we do that, I also want to mention that for the same action method, you can define multiple routes. So for example, currently this action method, this index action method, it will only get called when we type root URL slash home in the URL, right? So for example, let me run this application. And you see for the root URL, we are getting page not found. But if I type root URL slash home, and if I press enter, we are getting this response. Welcome from ASP.NET Core application. Okay. Now what we want is when we type the root URL in the address bar at that time, also, we want to get the same response. Basically for the root URL, we want to execute this same index action method. And it is possible to do that. All we have to do is we have to add another route attribute here and there we need to specify the root URL path and the root URL path is simply a slash with this. Now, if I go ahead and if I run this application, now that index method will also execute for root URL. So for the root URL, as you can see, we are getting this response. Welcome from ASP.NET Core application. If I go ahead and if I type root URL slash home there also, we should get the same response. Okay. So now this index action method, it is executing for this route slash home and also for root URL. Okay. So we can define multiple routes for the same action method. Now inside this controller, currently we have only one action method, but we can have multiple action methods inside a controller. So for example, let's go ahead and let's create another action method. And as I mentioned earlier, an action method is a public method in a controller class. Let's say this action method is also going to return a string value and I'm going to call it about. And from within this method, we want to again return a text content. And here we will say you are in about page. In the same way, let's go ahead and let's create one more action method. And this is also going to return a string value and I will simply call it contact. And from here also, let's go ahead and let's return some string value. And here, let's say you are in contact page. Okay. Now here we have defined these action methods. Now for which URL this about action method should be executed. And for which URL this contact action method should be executed. That we can define again by using route attribute. So let's say we want to execute this about action method when the user types root URL slash about in the address bar. And we want to execute this contact when the user types root URL slash contact in the address bar. Okay. So now in this home controller, we have three action methods index, which will execute for this route home and root URL about, which will execute for root URL slash about and contact, which will execute for root URL slash contact. Let's actually see that. Let's run this application again. And for the root URL, as you can see, we are seeing this response. Welcome from ASP.NET Core application. If I type root URL slash about, it should say you are in about page. And if I type root URL slash contact, it should say you are in contact page. All right. Now here we are specifying the route same as the action method name. But it's not mandatory that you specify the route same as the action method name. Here you can also call it as contact us. In that case, in the URL, when you type root URL slash contact us, this action method will be executed. Let me actually show you that. So now if I say root URL slash contact, we should get page not found because now we have specified the route as contact hyphen us. So now you will see you are in contact page. All right. Now we can also specify route parameters and route constraint when we are using this attribute routing. 
So for example, let me go ahead and let me create a new action method that is also going to be public. It is going to return some string value and I'll simply call it maybe products. From here, let's return a string value and let's say you are in products page. And on this, let's specify the route for this action method. So again, I'm going to use route attribute. And there, let's say we are going to have route as slash products slash and we are going to specify a route parameter, maybe ID. And this ID should be an integer value. And here, the minimum value which we are going to accept is, let's say, 1000. And the maximum value which we are going to accept, let's say, 9999. Okay, with this, let's run this application again. All right, now in the URL, if I say root URL slash products slash maybe thousand, and if I press enter, it says you're in products page. But if I say slash products slash some string value, maybe hello, you see we have this page not found error. And if I specify some number less than 1000, maybe triple nine, that case also we should get this page not found error. And if I specify a value more than double nine, double nine, for example, 10,000, then also we should get this page not found error. But if we specify any integer number between 1000 and double nine, double nine, for example, 5643, in that case, we should get this message, you are in products page. So in that case, this products action method will be executed. So in this way, Using attribute routing also, we can specify route parameters and on those route parameters, we can specify route constraints. All right, so this is all about action methods. Now, there are a few more things which I want to cover here about controllers. For example, let's say if you don't want to suffix controller in the class name, you can do that. But then you will have to use controller attribute before the class name. For example, if you don't want to use controller after this home controller name you can omit it that's okay but in that case in order to make this home class as a controller you will have to use controller attribute okay and this will also make this home as a controller okay and if i go ahead and if i run this application the application should still be working and you can also use this controller attribute as well as you can also name your controller by prefixing controller after it. So in this way also it is going to work when you have both the controller attribute as well as controller suffix in your controller class name. All right, we don't need this controller attribute because we are already suffixing our controller class name by using this controller. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.